On Real Time with Bill Maher, he had a compelling conversation with Republican Congressman Byron Donalds, successfully dismantling the MAGA ideology and highlighting how Trump's influence within the GOP is causing significant harm not only to his party, but to the country as a whole. Maher's ability to point out MAGA bullshit, such as Trump's refusal to concede the 2020 election because his fragile ego would literally drain from his orange, loose, wrinkly, diet coke-infused skin because he would finally have to come to terms with the fact that more than half of the Americans, the country he calls home absolutely despises him. And Trump's obsession with blatant lies, like we don't have an internet to check facts and rewatch Trump say one thing, then lie about saying that very same thing the next day, and then claim the media and the radical left and the deep state and Bud Light and trans people and immigrants all got together in a huge conspiracy to keep the 80 year old bald, fat, supposedly stinky, and all around piece of shit from helping America become great again. Trump's lies are not just occasional missteps by a decrepit old man but a constant stream of misinformation, aggrandizing Trump's accomplishments and blaming all that is wrong with America on people who don't worship him. Trump still continues to lie about the 2020 election being stolen, exaggerating crime rates, even though it's at an all-time low, claiming an immigrant crime wave that has killed hundreds of thousands of Americans, blaming immigrants for taking black jobs while proclaiming the economy is in shambles, but yet millions of immigrants are pouring into America and finding all these best black jobs. Trump's fabrications have shaped a false reality for his supporters, who truly believe his cynical and narcissistic view of the world, and everyone else has drunk the Kool-Aid or Bud Light or has been brainwashed by liberal college professors and they are the ones living in fantasy land. Trump constant distortion of facts and reshaping reality for power and manipulating the public is a fundamental threat to democracy. The normalizing of the disregard for truth has now extended beyond Trump to infect almost every Republican like a red wave of jockey. Marr also featured Pete Buttigieg, who eloquently discussed J.D. Vance, not the intelligent, reasonable, rational Vance from way back in 2020. No, we're talking about Trump's new vice presidential running mate. Buttigieg, who is very sharp-witted, dissected the lies and opportunism in Vance's journey for power. Buttigieg analysis underscored a simple truth. Wealthy individuals back the Republican Party because it serves their financial interests, tax cuts, and deregulation. By the way, for MAGA supporters, deregulation just means that the wealth and corporations can poison your food to improve their bottom line and there will be no agency to protect you and your family. Now that pretty much sums up Vance's crawl through shit to get that much closer to power. Worked out well for Mike Pence. Mars' conversation with Byron Donald also touched on why so many Trump officials left his administration. Donald's gonna Donald's and played that whataboutism card and made no attempt to answer the direct question. Mark continued to challenge Byron Donald in vain on why so many former Trump aides described him as unfit for office and will not even and cast their vote for him. Trump's own cabinet, let that sink in. His own cabinet members say, nah, that's a hard pass. Byron Donalds, instead of answering the direct question, decided to criticize current officials like Alejandro Mayorkas and Pete Buttigieg, and of course blamed immigrants and dodged the core issue. Why do those closest to Trump see him as a threat to democracy? After Byron Donalds pulls his head out of Trump's ass, the episode wrapped up with Buttigieg's incisive remark on J.D. Vance's transformation from a Trump critic to a cultish supporter, exposing a lack of principles driven by political expediency, raw power, and douchery. Mara and Buttigieg both highlighted the alarming trend of prioritizing personal gain over democratic values and country. Both make a strong case for why Trump and his legion of douche pose a grave danger to American democracy. This provides compelling and insightful commentary on the destructive impact of Trump and MAGA's country-destroying rhetoric and the broader implications for American politics and its citizens. If that wasn't enough, now and in a draw-dropping twist, President Joe Biden has decided to call it quits on seeking re-election. Yes, folks, you heard it right. Biden is stepping down from the Democratic national race, leaving the party in a whirlwind of speculation and strategy. Announced via tweet, Biden declared, my fellow Democrats, I have decided not to accept the nomination and to focus all my energies on my duties as president for the remainder of my term. And now back to my nap. And just like that, he threw his full support behind Vice President Kamala Harris, hailing her as the best decision he ever made. Like an episode of South Park or if you're MAGA, InfoWars, or TimCast, but reality, not fiction. Biden's formal letter to the American people was a nostalgic pat on the back for the progress made during his tenure. From rebuilding the nation post-pandemic to lowering prescription drugs, Biden took a victory lap and then a nap, reminding everyone of the strongest economy in the world under his watch when he was away. He gracefully tripped off the stage with a promise to fulfill his presidential duties and hinted at more detailed address to the nation soon. Meanwhile, Trump and the Republicans were left a 
attacking a non-opponent, scrambling to adjust their game plan, handing out MAGA diapers after Trump shit himself live on Untruth Social. Enter Kamala Harris, the heir apparent, apparently, who's now ready to take a baton. Prosecutor versus felon. She praised Biden's leadership and expressed her honor at his endorsement, gearing up to, quote, earn and win this nomination. The Democrats are poised for a showdown with Trump and MAGA, and Harris seems ready for the fight. Shit, she better be. Them MAGA goons are effing crazy. With money pouring into her campaign post-Biden endorsement, as of this post, about $81 million in 24 hours, the most money raised by anyone ever, to quote Donald Trump. However, the fun doesn't stop there. The buzz around the convention is rife with speculation about whether the Democrats will self-destruct like they do every single time. The political drama is set to continue, and it's anyone's guess how the chips will fall, although it's pretty clear. Biden's decision, while shocking to many, is seen by some as an act of bravery, putting country over self. Democrats are beholden to ideals and progress, not to any one false idol. Despite not being thrilled about stepping down, Biden recognized after his second morning nap the need to prioritize the nation's needs. Does anyone think Trump would give up power for it? any reason whatsoever? This move was influenced by a series of less than stellar public appearances, to put it lightly, waning donor confidence, and a media frenzy around Biden's capability to lead, which was fair and just. We should know if a president can lead or not. In the grand tapestry of American politics, Biden's exit might just be the reset button needed. It shifts the election narrative back to a referendum on Trump and his age, away from Biden's cognitive state, with Trump and his cronies already sharpening their knives for Harris. Expect a barrage of tax targeting her gender, race, and experience. Yet this change could invigorate the Democratic base and redefine the election landscape. Trump, the oldest presidential nominee in American history, seems to be having a meltdown, which is common in old age. The GOP's plans are in disarray, and the political ecosystem is rapidly evolving, and Trump is not in control of the narrative. Quick, someone get him a Diet Coke. Biden's decision has thrown the MAGA shit factory into overdrive, and it's game time for Kamala Harris and the Democrats and anyone who wants to keep a Trumpy king out of office. Buckle up because the next few months promise to be a political shit coaster, considering we recently witnessed an attempt on Trump's life to Biden stepping down, leaving us all to wonder what the hell will happen next.